Super, thank you very much. Um, so welcome to the Tadvig um, task group for the minimal information about uh, um, digital specimen. Um, and this is the working session for the Tadwig working sessions. Um, we have the agenda here for um, which is going to essentially run through um, some updates on where we are now. But really, the focus for for this session, I think it's going to be looking at um, numbers five and six on the agenda. And this is looking at some of the test implementations that have been done and that could be done um, and just have some discussions and ideas about those and also the ratification process. Um, and we've got um, Ben is here today as well, and he's going to be able to provide us some guidance with the with the ratification process as well, particularly the next steps. So that's kind of the agenda. So um, there will be time at the end for any other business. So if anyone has anything that they would like to particularly discuss, feel free to go into the um, agenda document and add things, add items into the any other business, if there's anything particular you want to raise. And it just makes sure that we're aware of it and it'll get covered <clears throat> and that we'll leave time for it. Um, so what I wanted to do was just start with some of the some of the updates, and um, I think I'll, if I kick those off, I should introduce myself. Sorry, I'm Elspeth Haston. I'm the um, deputy herbarium curator at the Royal Botanic Garden, Edinburgh, um, and together with Kat and Kat will introduce herself in a second. We'll uh, we're we're co-chairing the Tadwig Mids Task Group. So, Kat, um, over to you. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm Kat Chapman, and uh, I'm the Biodiversity Informatics Coordinator for IDIGBio, which is uh, the national aggregator for uh, <clears throat> for natural history collections in the United States. Cool. Thank you. I always forget that. <laughs> we, should, we should always introduce ourselves, but I tend to forget. Um, super. So um, what I would like to do is start with the an update on the MIDS elements. Um, so these are information elements first of all um and there is a, a spreadsheet which i've um, put a link into the into the document for them um if i just um click on them here because i realize i've opened them in a different place um what you'll find here is a complete overview of all the mids elements as they currently stand um, each of them has the um, information element name um, down on the left. Um, we've got the category, mids level. So going from zero through to one, two, and three. Um, and then we have the, the element URI. Now that takes you to the GitHub issue for each of the mids information elements. Um, we have a label for each of the elements. Um, and then um, definition, a purpose, recommendations, examples, and whether there are required. So um, and we've got some notes in here as well. So um, if what I would suggest is if anyone does see anything in here that they, they want to make a note about, use the notes field, um, and that would be really helpful. So the required, what you will see is that with the MIDS elements, um, they may be required in all disciplines or in one of only one or more of three disciplines that have been um, identified and cat categorized, and that is biology, geology, and paleontology. Um, so that what each element consists of and this is the the best overview this is the kind of if you like the, in some ways the top copy um is in here the, um as you'll see there's the the link so if you click on the link it will take you through to the um github the mids github and you should find the information in here we're trying to create 
a situation where there's a, a kind of table at start of each of the elements. Um, there may be some discussion below, but the table will essentially, uh, the aim will be to keep that updated. So there's a little bit of work there to make sure that they are correctly aligned, but that's what you should find. We have some information in pretty much all of these fields now, <laughs> but it would be really nice if people can can go through and um, check that you are happy with the with the definitions, purposes, recommendations. Um, the other part um, that we're looking for help with, I think is going to be examples. Um, we're getting more examples in there now, so it's looking it's looking pretty good. Um, but if if anyone sees any or knows of any good examples, especially we want to be inclusive and diverse in the examples. So it'd be really nice to make sure that we're covering a broad range of different um, um, disciplines um, and geographical regions. So that is um, essentially the update on the on the elements. I'll go back to the to the um, agenda um, and this is where I can then like open it up a bit and ask if there's any questions um, any comments on on the information elements as they stand looks like people maybe oh Chris yes I have a question. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm new to this meeting. Um, Chris, I'm representing Natural History Museum in Vienna. I can't speak to the whereabouts of Haimo, but I had a meeting with him yesterday. He was a bit under the weather, so maybe maybe that's the case. But yeah, I don't know more details. I wanted to ask about the media part, um, so that it, it's becoming increasingly important to, to display media. And I, I know that there is a, like a global effort to digitalize a lot of specimens um and so what what would help is maybe a more complex description of of that element uh, because for now i understood it's a list of links to resources but lately um i'm i'm facing a challenge where we're developing a small portal in austria using the mid standard um so I'm facing the challenge to to include in in that media element both a thumbnail and a set of full resolution fo photography. And and so my question, and maybe we could we could brainstorm on this, is how could we include um, the these kind of sort of complex requirement into that media field? Thank you. Super. I think it's a, it's a it's a really good question. It's something that um, I think has been discussed a, a, some to some extent during the the, the pro progress of the of the mid specification. Um, and I'd, I'd be great to get other people's views on this. I mean, one one thought, and this is a question, is. To some extent, the mids we've we've looked at the mids um, as a, essentially a, a presence absence or um, kind of specification, um, and not always looking necessarily at the, at the the quality, if you like, and more in, and more information about the the element. And I wonder if, to some extent looking at the, the kind of image is veering into quality rather than just presence but I don't I'm not sure so I does anyone have any other thoughts on this as well um yeah if no one else chimes and um yeah and just to to clarify so we're asking the, the question comment concern is is about you know, within within the mids element for for media, you know, trying to to flesh out and maybe enforce the presence of like high resolution images and a thumbnail. Like, I just want to be clear on that. Okay, yeah, I feel like enforcing that would be really difficult. 
like that's just my opinion i mean i i agree like having you know a thumbnail version like web friendly thumbnail version and then like the full resolution yeah we should expect that but you know kind of reiterating what elspeth just said you know mids is less about data quality enforcement um just it's just kind of impossible for us to enforce data quality um you know but what we can enforce at least to some extent is what i like to call data richness um you know just having something there even if it isn't necessarily correct because we can't we can't enforce correctness but we can enforce presence absence mm -hmm. um so presence absence of a thumbnail and high resolution image i mean sure maybe that that is possible but there's no like yeah, getting into enforcement of like, okay, well, we need to prove that this is a thumbnail. We need to prove that this is um, a high resolution image. You know, that just, it's a lot of like decision trees um, for implementation that I don't know would, if it would be fair to impose on developers. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, Matthias, yes. Well, image is a bit of a special category in which because it references an external object essentially to the data. It's not just data, it's a bit more than that. It's, it's typically also in technical terms a payload. So there are two aspects to images, to media in, in MITS, and that is the existence of media. That's the first thing we want to check. Has it been digitized? And the second thing is, can I access that digitized image? So those two things we can um, take apart and we can list them separately. But indeed, going into thumbnails and high resolution, that's quality. And yeah, that depends on the specimen type. That depends on the infrastructure used. That depends on the, the image standards in use. It's that's not something we can cover here. And Sam? Yeah, Matthias, I think even the second part is, so is is there an, an, an image URL in the data provided? I think that that's probably the, the first the first part of the information that you said. I think that's what we check here. The second part is that the image actually is accessible. Does the link work? I think that's already pretty tricky to check as you would need to make an actual call to the to the to the server of the image to the image server uh, and see if you can actually return a positive response and and, and I know there have been some issues with checking this at large scale because the servers are not always capable of handling a lot of requests. Um, so how we implement this it, it 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 just checks is there a link available and not even does the link actually work um, that. I don't know if that there might maybe auto fall between is there information and what's the quality, although the quality is really poor if the link doesn't even resolve. Um, yeah, so how we interpreted it is really just is there a link to an to an image? How we interpreted it. I think um, I think the, the 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 properties of the image and and I think there's a lot of a lot more discussion I think to be had about that for digitized objects and image standards and image metadata standards. I mean, there's there's so much I think we need to cover there. But I'm going to come back to you, Chris, to to follow up on your question. Has that answer? Are those have those answers helped you? Uh, yes, so uh, just just to answer the last question, so I'm using it as specified. So I'm using I'm using this media element as as uh, an array of type with, with string elements, and I assume every string element is a link, and the order of the elements um, is important because always the first one is a thumbnail, and what's what's next could be one or more image resources, which which are high resolution, but I always assume the first one is a thumbnail. So yeah. So I guess in, in other implementations of this, um, is anyone doing, what are people doing differently to that? Is anyone else doing something similar? 
we, what we mostly see is that then um, a standard is ultimate core is being used. And in ultimate core, there are some fields which describe the dimensions or the format of the image. Um, so there, there is room in other Tetrix standards. I think Autumn Core is specifically for um, multimedia resources. And then what we do for the miscalculation is to, is to check, um, let's say, if, um, yeah, if there is an Autumn Core information, then does it contain the, I think we at least check the AC access jury. So the Alderman Core access jury, which is a property of, of Alderman Core. Um, but yeah, in, in, in other standards, there is space to provide additional information about the image. So so this definition, at least concatenated and, se and, and separated of media associated to the specimen is a, is a sort of a loose definition because that list can contain sort of data objects, right? So not just strings of links, but also something more complex, for example, a link uh, to, a, to a hosted image and maybe mm -hmm. a description of license or a description of owner and something like that. So this, this sort of media field can carry a complex list of objects as long as the nature or the intention of the list is to describe media resources right yeah and what i think might be confusing here is that for mix these are more checks on whether a particular um, yeah data format piece of piece of information contains any of these elements but it's not really a data standard in itself it's more a, a check over other standards such as um, the darwin core um, ABCD, EFG, um, and, 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 and a couple others we included, but not not so much a standard of itself and not so much terms or properties of itself for the format, but more a list of, of items to check in in a piece of data. I don't know if I worded it correctly. But... I think it's a that's a really good point, Sam, and I think that's um, part takes us back maybe to that thing I said at the beginning with these are information elements so they're um so what what will become hopefully what will help is when we look at the mapping I think map, that yeah. the mapping is probably going to be the key key to this would that would that be fair to say so I think, I think it might help yeah so I think hold on to your question Chris <laughs> um and when we get onto the mapping we, we can maybe pick it up there as well and see if that that brings us um, some more answers for you. Sure, thank you. Super, thank you. Um, so one thing I would like to check is, um, I guess, am I, am I still sharing my screen? And are you able to see the spreadsheet? Good, that's fine, just checking. <laughs> That's helpful. Um, so, are there any other questions about the the information elements, or are people okay with that? So, if we go back onto the agenda, so happily, we're now moving a bit more onto the mapping. So, this movie gives us a chance to 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 look at um, an update on the mapping, and I'm going to ask. Uh, if Matthias and Sam obviously will be able to come in on this as well, but I think if Matthias, if you lead a bit on this, that would be really helpful. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Yeah. Um, I'll... Well, and just let me know if you want me to share a screen and do anything, just let me know. Um, so I can share. There's too many tabs open right now. But... Um... <laughs> Just see. I click the right one. Can you all see this? Yes. So, 
late last year, we worked on um, this mapping. The idea, for, so this one is for Darwin Core specifically. The idea is that using this, you map each Smith's element to typically multiple terms that are used in Darwin Core and a bit more broadly uh, in GBIF um, Darwin Core archive as well, because there's some variation there. And through this, it should be become possible to make an, an implementation of a mix calculation. So based on the Darwin core elements that you use in your that Darwin core archive, you can calculate mids, a mid score for each specimen based on all of these sort of criteria, which are the mids elements. And that starts from this spreadsheet where these mappings are listed following the triple S O M mapping format. Um, so for each mids element, we map them using a certain predicate depending on the, the logic behind it, to a Darwin core term. And if you go down, you see that there's also a few GBIF and Audubon core terms there as well. But this way, we do this for all the MITS elements. And yeah, there's some idiosyncrasies to how this works in triple SOM. So this spreadsheet flows into this one with... Um, compact URIs to make it much more readable. And then this spreadsheet with different profiles for geology and biology, because as Elspeth said, there are some differences between these two disciplines. These can then be exported as a tab separated tabular format. And that in addition with a small sort of metadata YAML file makes up the triple S or M um, mapping. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now. Then I can have a bit more overview of all the things that I have going on on my end. And that is an opportunity for people to ask questions. Uh, if they're interested, I'm going to go share some links in the chat. So that should give you some more indication of what it is about. So I uploaded um, the, ver the first version of the mapping to a fork of the, the MITS repository that you can see in that GitHub link, so there's the tab separated files and the YAML files. That's not fully synchronized with the latest version of the MITS elements as Elspeth showed them. There's some discrepancies because it's tricky to synchronize to Google Sheets perfectly if they're trying to do different things and it's going to get worse if we have different profiles. So that's something to keep in mind for the future. But it's a workable instrument now. Um, and yeah, I we juggled the structure of it a bit to follow the specifications of the triple SOM standard because the column order needs to be in a certain um, rank and things like that. Um, and there's also a bit of an experimental usage of the uh, intersection of predicate from the, the OWL standard that we use to cover some of the logic for the mapping. Um, yeah. Obviously, as MITS is not really ratified yet, we don't have pits for the MITS elements. So those don't resolve right now. Um, I think we could temporarily use the uh, the GitHub issue links then, but that's a bit more, yeah. It's, it's not as elegant, but it works. So currently it's just the GitHub repository and added to that, it's the, the MITS name, which obviously doesn't resolve, but it's just a placeholder so you can work with it. And um, so that at least some implementations can start building on this and implement the its calculation, um, which I probably will talk about a bit more later. Um, yeah, just going over. I can probably just share my notes document as well, then people can follow also what I've said, because I think I've been rambling on quite a bit about lots of different things. So I hope that was more or less clear. Um, if you're not familiar with triple SOM, it might not be that clear, but yeah, it, we don't have the time to go too deep into the technicalities behind that. Um, That's fantastic. Sorry, I just want to check. Um, then we can't hear you, but 
just wanted to make sure that you weren't expecting us okay. to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so so Scott, Scott's offers like two or three fields for mappings. SSSOM offers several classes, just a big expanded version of it. It gets pretty detailed, but it's really nice because it offers all kinds of stuff to it. And on Latimer Core, the documentation, if you go down to one of the terms, there's a little block for SCAS, and then there's another caret that drops down for the extra SSOM information, sort of separated it. I need to fix because it's not obvious, but um, it's there. Yeah, I have to give if, credit because I based a lot of the building this mapping on what uh, Latimer Core did with triple SOM. So. To all Matt Woodburn. You did. <laughs> right. you did. I take no credit for any of it. Nice to be I'm, consistent. I'm, I'm going to to use this this opportunity just to to uh, get in here real quick and say if anybody <laughs> of you is interested in learning more about SSSOM or triple SOM or however you want to pronounce it, um, uh, uh, half an hour after this meeting there is the um, mappings between standards uh, task group uh, in this same Zoom room, uh, same URL, and uh, we start out with a uh, yeah a short introduction to uh, SSSOM uh, by Aisa Meyer, uh, who worked on the mapping from um, uh, Darwin Core to uh, the MIX standard. Um, so she will give like a uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, uh, presentation on, on uh, yeah, total SOM, so. Nice, that's it's very relevant. It's lovely that things tie in well so, so well together, isn't it? <laughs> um, and it is the joy of actually using uh, using standardized approaches for standards is 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 a good idea as well. <laughs> so um, thank you, thank you, Mattis. Um, any other any other questions, um, thoughts um, on on the mapping? Well, I think the I think the structure in, in the GitHub is really nice. Um, I think that's really, really looking good, and it, I think will help us when we start moving into. Um, we're going to maybe talk a little bit later about maybe how we present the MIDS information and the specification, so that it make it easier for people to to access and use and implement. Maybe one thing to note is that mm -hmm. I based this um, mapping, well, Sam also contributed quite a bit, um, on how Darwin Core archives are documented in the different uh, standards repositories. But this is also very much oriented towards a GBIF implementation because GBIF produces a vast amount of Darwin Core archives. The downside is they do it a bit differently than you would presume from the Darwin Core documentation. So that raises some issues in that if you want to measure it that way, you have to adapt also to the way GBIF does it, which excludes some extensions, for instance, from their archives by default and incorporates them into the occurrence core. And it harmonizes the way, the multiple ways you can attach media to the specimen records. So, and yeah. They also parse quite some data and in their interpreted version, they enrich it with their own uh, annotations, which has <laughs> repercussions if you want to measure digitization status. So yeah, just mapping for Darwin core might not be sufficient. We might have want to have to map to Darwin core usage. And that makes, that opens up a whole can of worms. So that was yeah. one thing that, I noticed when I tried to implement this into an actual mid calculation tool, this sort of mapping. Mm -hmm. And I think we'd probably find similar thing with geocase, for example. Um, and I know, I guess just also just to say that the the decision was made to start the mapping to focus on Darwin Core, um, and then the ABCD essentially to follow. Um, and then with the work that's being done, as David was talking about, looking at mapping between Darwin Core and ABCD, I think it's also going to help <laughs> this process as well.
So I guess one thing that's coming back to to Chris, um, to your question about media, um, do you see this the, this mapping as being something that would help you in terms of measuring the absolutely because so i'm tasked with build, building a discovery portal here for for sort of digitalized austrian preserved specimens and we're pulling data from from gbif so this map, mapping is amazing it, it cuts my development time significantly and we're also approaching geocase and we're also approaching our own databases um every media part from these because that's the most complex one the rest i it's brought pretty simple joins pretty sort of straightforward data media is complex because of its diversity and so that's why i had my first question there because that's my current struggle so thank you very much for clarifying a lot of it so and yeah it's a cool meeting thanks a lot excellent so we seem to have timed it well <laughs> before you've done too much of the work and after <laughs> and yeah so and it must be lovely for Matthias and Sam to hear this as well, because they've done a lot of work on, on the mapping. It's very nice to always to hear that it's useful for other people as well as your, as well as yourselves. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice to hear. Uh, maybe one thing to add here. So the, the mapping maps for media to um, various properties. Um, so in the GBF namespace, but also in Audubon Core and in the multimedia extension to Darwin Core. So there's a, very, a couple of options there. When you want to do that in practice with a GBIF generated Darwin Core archive, then it's just looking at media type, which is a sort of summary field that GBIF makes based on lots of checks. Well, quite a few checks at least. And that's just checking the absence or presence of, of, of that. In MIDS 3, we could go deeper into that, but implementing this is a bit of a, an issue still that I haven't resolved yet. So that that's the sort of that's the status and that's the sort of difficulty you do encounter when working with images and and how they're um, popular how they're published in the wild today. Super. That's great. Thank you. So, I think going back into the agenda. So. What we can do now is maybe have a look at the have an update on the specification um just to let you know that we're we are <laughs> that kind of one exists <laughs> you may not you may not um know much about it but it it is in here um so there's a link in the uh, it is just a draft and there's been several iterations of this um, and it's always been a bit of a um, a question about how best to to make this available um, given it's a draft and it's kind of like a working document it's been it has been changes there's been different versions um, so the versioning has been has been like part of the um, I'll just share my screen so you can see um, Has been part of the the the, the challenge as well. Um, so, what we would like to do, and I don't have it up here to hand, but I'm sure I'm sure um, someone will have it then, or or someone will have it very very easily. Is the is the link? Oh, actually, you maybe put it in the chat already. There's link to the Latimer core. Um, Yes, yes, there is a link to the link. Yeah, here we go. So, um, so to some extent, this is this is what we're I would say we're aiming for. At the moment, um, what we've got is we have on the on the main uh, mids um, uh, website, the GitHub, we have a link that takes you to the um the the definition on the github um but we also have what, what i think of as a essentially a working document which is the i'm going to find it sorry i'm 
dashing between different different tabs here. But the, the Google Doc is essentially the, the main working document um, that we're we're pulling things together. So and that's the link that that I've shared. <clears throat> um, this is what we're aiming to get, as I say, into something similar to the, the Latimer core, where it's it's um, we can see that Latimer core have has the word draft. So we would be looking to have a similar kind of presence for the mid specification. Um, and I think this is a fantastic piece of work that was done done on this um, I could, to create I could, to create this. So maybe Ben, do you yeah. want to come in a bit on this? Yeah, let me let me show you. So it's it's all automated. Right, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing and you can share. You guys ready? Um, it is now. Bear in mind, it needs to be generalized. Right now, it works for um, Latimer Core only, but it's you know it's not it won't be hard to to use it for other purposes. This is called static gen. It, it just st standardized standards documentation generator. It's a Python thing I wrote. Um, it takes the idea was this: there are a lot of different scripts and ways people are generating those pages. Um, everybody seems to have a different way. <clears throat> what we want to do is come up with one. This is a format. You know, different uh, Latimer Core is big, so it's got all kinds of options, and make sure we're we're all presenting these documentation pages um, in a consistent manner because they are the subject of the ratification process. That normative terms list, that's the focus. And so that's what you're showing people. That's what the whole review is based is, is based on are those pages. So they're really important. Make sure everything's there. Um, so it's familiar with Python. I'm pretty new to Python. Um, and I am I, this is it's freeze Python Flask is a is a short Python Flask is like mini Django. It, it allows you to say, basically generate web pages pretty easily with a couple of files. Um, it's good for small stuff. And then freeze allows you to generate static HTML files from the Python. And then that gets thrown into a docs folder in the LTC repository, and it comes up on GitHub pages. And so all GitHub pages are easy. Just have somebody set it up for you to enable it. And then so all I do, literally, the idea is that you're already giving CSV files to Steve, right? Well, here, these are the exact same CSV files are being given to Steve. So that's the thing. What you want to do is have something simple where you don't have to create anything new. Just give me what you're already doing. And so I need three of these, basically. And if you get rid of mapping, I need two. And so you drop them in here. I get them from the repository, throw them in here. And then you've got a couple markdown files here. Uh, each page is a header, that header section. Most of it's standardized, but um, there's some, you'll see there's some extra sections, like stuff like um, what external namespaces are using, things like that. But it's all, it's just here. Resources, by the way, is optional. It's really just quick reference, home, and the terms list, right? Um, and all I do, it's pretty cool, man. I haven't shown this to anybody, and so I'm, I'm, I hope it works. All right. Now, bear in mind, this works for LTC. I need to, it's not much to get it to work for something else, but it, um, I need to, make that happen. why is it not? Be able to start, you know, you show somebody something and the first time you show it to somebody, it doesn't, I mean, seriously, really? I mean, it's, this has never happened before. All right. No, I don't need the Python console. I want this, you know? All right. Just. All right, fine. All right, so let's pretend. Actually, <laughs> I hate demos. I haven't given a demo in so long either. All right, give, just talk amongst yourselves for two seconds. All right, um, let's see. I just gotta, I gotta get to it. Um, Tad, wait. Let's see. Let's so, um, while Ben's doing that, I'm gonna just say, yeah. um, I'm right. glad this is being recorded because there's a lot of information in here, which is fantastic. Um, so. Really appreciate you doing this, Ben. Sure. All right. Perfect. All right. So all I got to do with the project. Okay, cool. All right. Um, I don't remember what. Now this is this is just. Here we go. All right. It has a, a virtual environment, which I have to get the name of. Um, I'm so sorry. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's not right. Ready? Boom. It's going to run. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Awesome. 
Well, we're back on top. I'm not drowning. I'm not driving you crazy. All right. Local host, uh, 5,000. So this is the development. So I test it from here. Okay, here we are. So I took those three CSV files here. It did it on the fly. I had to connect them together, do a couple things with them here, and then it generates these web pages. Done. It's pretty cool, right? And then and these are generated by templates, and then it basically loops through and populates the tables. Um, here it generates all these things. And I've done some style adjustments. I, I've done web design for a long time. I, don't, I do a little bit of freelance, not too much, but sometimes those skills come in handy because now we have columns of these things. So all this is generated automatically. And then, so I'm testing it here. If I like it and I'm good with it, all I do is um, go to an actual command line prompt that works. And I go, uh, uh, what do I do? do something, what do I do? All right, that's it. Right documentation, not all in my head. All right, I can do that. <laughs> oh, it won't. All right, you know what? We're just, we're just, we're just gonna pretend that worked. And then, so <laughs> that's never not worked, by the way. Just for the record, it's never not worked. I've never seen that. But basically, what it does is it generates these index term static. Each one of these has, you know, assets. It's got the resource name. I take these. I go to the Git, the LTC repository. I drop in the docs folder and I publish it. I'm done. That's it. So what's cool about this is that at the end of the expert review, Matt would go, Matt Woodburn would go and make three adjustments. I'd grab those files, throw them in the front, run the scripts, I'm done. And it pops it right out. So it's cool, right? Now it's it's really Latimer Core some funny things because what I have to do is it's create a join on two CSVs. And Latimer Core reuses term names based on scope. So I think address exists twice. But it it so there's not what the the problem there was that there was no column that has a unique, there's no unique column. So I had to combine class and term to get it unique. Um, I don't know if that's going to, if it doesn't happen, it just makes it even simpler. So, and there are features, you'll see the required table, the SSOM SCOS, um, and a couple other things that may not apply for you guys, but those are just optional features, right? I can just turn those off, right? It just won't, you know, won't be in the templates, here, right? So that's it. And it's just a custom CSS. And then I picked, they wanted purple. So I, I, I added purple. I like the purple. But you guys, if you want a different color, it's fine. There's just a simple CSS file that goes in there. And it shouldn't be a big deal. And I'd like to test it um, on someone else's standard. The, the nice, the idea would be that you do it. I give you this, you check out the thing, you run the scripts, you do it. The problem there is there's a lot, that's a pretty tall order. Um, I'd have to put in like verifications, validations, all that kind of stuff. So. But the point is that when you, as long as you make those CSV files, it's not going to be complicated to adjust it for embeds. And then you can have a copy of static gen for your standard and then just generate it. It's pretty straightforward. So that works. And it usually works. <laughs> it really does. That's brilliant. My, I, yeah, I sympathize. I really do. It always, it's, it's guaranteed, isn't it? You just... <laughs> just for a long time. And when you have a demo, even if, <laughs> It, I, the thing has to work at the demo. That's the key. And it, it cannot work. And even if you only can show 10%, you'd rather show 10% that works than something that doesn't, right? It just does not <laughs> matter. It does not. It has to work. It's never not work. All right. Anyways. But it was great. It was really, really nice to see. Um, and the, yeah, the thinking behind it is 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 really cool. I think having having these kind of simple um simple systems that have complexity underneath but they're they're simple to to work with <laughs> yeah. um so nikki I, I see there was a comment um there was obviously something came out of the of the um tag meeting was that yeah i think ben was talking about this i didn't see it see it see his screen running it oh sorry okay i know so yeah, just to just to pick up that comment again, um, it it would be really nice. I think if we could if we could have that doing continuous integration, so that it's pulling any change you make is going to regenerate your your documentation for you. Tag, I need to just like really walk, sort of walk what, tag it. Nice to, with the tag, it might be nice just like to walk through it like in more detail. You know what I mean? Technically wise, I I just talked a lot during that. <laughs> so I didn't. I didn't quite do the demo, but I need to. 
show you guys walk through it. What me walk but, through what I just suggested. What I just, well, what I just showed and what you mentioned is to walk. I plan to sort of walk through it in more detail with Tag. Yeah, how it works. You know, what I mean? we shouldn't hijack this meeting. I agree. Um, <laughs> but there are ways that immediately you make you make a change in your repo that it could regenerate all the all the stuff without yes. having Ben as the kind of critical human in the loop. Which I didn't even think of. No, you should proceed with your agenda. Thanks. Yeah. No, no, it's great. I mean, it's 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 you know it's something that's we're going to benefit from. So so it's good. <laughs> um. But I think I think that's going to help us. I think if we've got something like that that people can access, and it's a it's a kind of nice access to to mids, I think that's going to be really helpful. Where they can get the especially the mapping information more easily, they can get the the elements. It's just going to, it's going to make it a lot easier for people to work with. Um, and therefore, you know, we should hopefully increase uptake as well, which would be really important. So, so I'm going to come back now with um, any questions or comments about the about the specification and about the plans for the specification. Hey. Oh, Pat, yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I arrived late. There is storm here, and I was in the car between Brussels and here. Okay. Uh, so I'm well, glad you made it. <laughs> yeah, um, I just have a general question uh, that I got from someone from uh, the set of Earth Science Working Group, because we asked them to revise the MITs, and then we asked them a bit later to revise the Latimer core for uh, Earth Sciences, and some of them who are not involved that much of that, we got very confused, because they couldn't understand that Latimer core is the is within the interest group of collection description and then uh, the MITS uh, task group under the same group and how these two revision and standards are related and how they will be used in the future. So they thought that MITS was a kind of extension or that would be part and so they, they were a bit confused that there would be too many TEDWIC standards and they got completely lost of what is asked to them. So I would suggest maybe in the communication in general to make it somewhere clear uh, what's the difference between Latimer Core and MITS and why they are in the same interest group. Because for outsiders who are not in TEDWIC, they say they have the feeling that we speak Chinese and they don't know where to start with review and they don't see the difference. And so they they, they didn't give any comments to the review to Latimer Core because of this confusion and that they didn't understand anymore what to do. So maybe a general thing for the non tedwick people who are not all the time involved to try maybe to clarify when we ask uh, comments to domain specific uh, experts about the definition and controlled vocabularies about the context and how and where these standards will be used in future if they are Darwin core extension or new standards or standalone because they they couldn't understand that no I think that's an important point I think um it's it's one that we've been clarifying um amongst the the mids task group as well to some extent is, is what the mids is <laughs> and what's what the status of the mids information elements are and etc um i think the, the one of the main points i would say is that I'm, so i'm just looking at the i can share my screen um i'm just looking at the to share um the community in the tadwick site um and what we can see here is um the the relationship between the different um groups um so we've got the interest groups and we've got the task groups so um if i look at um trying desperately to see the um um the mids here we go um um so we've got the 
or the collection descriptions group, um, which, if I, apologies if I get this horribly wrong, people just over, override me, but um, this is essentially where the Latimer core standard has come out of. Yeah. And the Latimer core standard is a standard mm. and um, the MIDS um, is I mean, I, call, I talk quite a lot about the mid specification. I mean, it's a kind of, I mean, I, can, I sometimes use the word digitization standard, sometimes mid uh, specification. But the key thing is, is that the mid elements are information elements. They are they are not um, terms in themselves. So the 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 a standard will have will have um, terms. The mid information element elements are not terms so essentially what the mids does is it um it, it it builds on top of other standards it's um and uses the terms in other standards and it's all about the mapping of those terms could to determine the layman could we say that it's more a standard method whereas the other the other is more a standard on the data because we have that in the genetic part that you have uh, the data standards. And then on the other hand, we have from other groups who are more defining methods, lab methods and so on, uh, ISO or not, about how to use the data or the samples themselves. Could, could this be a parallel or is it totally different? I don't. I mean, I I don't want to say too much about the Latimer core of the standards because it's not my area. Um, other people can speak much more about that. In terms of mids, I would say that mids. I wouldn't. I'm not sure. I would say it's much about a method, though. I think it is more. Uh, a, a, it's essentially a, a standard for the level of digitization from the completed. So it's um, that right. is what it's about. Probably the measurement method or statistical method to or kpi uh, how to but i think i think i think it's an important question but i think it's maybe one that we can we can come back mm -hmm. to i think i think um i i don't think it has i think it i don't think it has an impact on the thing on mids itself no, i think no, it has an impact the, on how we user, present mids yeah, and on the future potential users yes yeah. Yes. So I think it's about how we present MIDS mm -hmm. and how we inform people about MIDS and how we disseminate MIDS. Mm -hmm. More, it feels like it's more about that than than the the content and structure of MIDS itself. Is would that be fair to say? Yeah. So I think I think that's maybe something we can take on to look and see how we how we um, dis, um, define MIDS and and present it. And we can look at that in the specification as well, the wording, um, to try and make that clearer for people um, without necessarily trying to define other standards like Latimer Core. We'll leave that to Latimer Core to try and get that message across. <laughs> yeah, the main confusion came because it's a task group of Latimer Core in the, the website. I think it, it, it's a it's actually a task group of the collection descriptions interest group, which I think is yeah. I don't know if that, is that does that we discussed in the Latimer core session that we would change this page and add Latimer core there. So okay. That's also, maybe something we need to discuss <laughs> okay. with you as a task group yeah. <laughs> because the so. okay. But I think um, well, what we can do is we can take that take that on board, and we can have discussions. I think maybe with the with the Latimer Core group, um, and that can maybe be part of the this, um, maybe Tadwick themselves can take that yeah. on board as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we this page really needs needs some work. We had also discussed this previously in the technical architecture group. Because at, at the moment it says uh, interest in task groups as part of the community, uh, and on a separate page it lists like all of the the functional subcommittees, 
which I think should belong here as well, because that's also part of the community. If you want to get the, no, the whole range of activities sure. of Tedwig, then having all of the different groups on, on a single page uh, would be much more helpful. In particular, if we have, like with the mappings group, have a task group that is hierarchically underneath the, the uh, yeah, technical architecture group as, as a functional subcommittee. So I guess there, there are many ideas where we need to to uh, yeah do something about this page and maybe reorder some some of the, the um, groups. Super. Okay, so we'll I think we'll take that on board. I think there's there's obviously work to be to be done there. I think maybe for for all of us. I think the the mids um, page on <clears throat> on the Tadwig site has to be updated as well. So I think there's there's quite a bit maybe of work to do there. And we can think about how we how we refer to these these task groups and 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 outputs. Thank you. So I've got uh, a bit on the update on on the GitHub. I think we've actually covered that to, to a large extent. Um, so we've had we've I brought that some of that into the into the update on the elements, and um, we talked about it a bit with the specifications. So I think I'm just going to skip over that if that's okay, um, because I really want to get on to the um, discussion about some of the test implementations, um, and it'd be really nice to to have some discussion on this as well. And I also see that Heim has joined us too, which is perfect timing. Um, so what I would like to do is maybe just have a a couple of um, quick run throughs of some of the test implementations. I know Sam, you've got one that we can maybe talk through, and then Hymo as well. I think that'd be really good. Good to have some discussion on this. Yeah. So, shall I start? Shall I take over? Yes, please, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe just two slides. Wait, still first. I need to share my screen. Um, all right. Can can you give me your mic, Silspit? Oh, sure. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. No. Um... Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Uh, yeah, it should be visible now. Okay. Um, yeah. So we did this go. We integrated the mid calculation as part of the uh, of the data ingestion pipeline. So really simple workflow is that we start an ingestion pipeline. We need to ingest an historical archive or biocase endpoint. And one of the first steps to, to ease all the, the further calculations and working with data is that we harmonize it to uh, something called the open digital specimen, which is basically an adaption of the new GBF unified model, which uses mostly lower core terms. Um, yeah, we assign a, a DOI and then we calculate the mids level. So for each specimen that we store, we have a mids level calculated in there. Um, it is a bit based on the, the previous standard, so we have to update it. But yeah, I can I can show some some graphs. Um, yeah, so we first learn normalization data. So Basically, part of what's in the, this uh, triple SRM mapping that we made is is done in this harmonization process. So we take fields from uh, ABCD and we harmonize them to the report. And we use uh, a field which I think is OpenDS specific or topic discipline to calculate whether an object is biological, paleontological, or geological. So those are the, 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 the three things. And if we can calculate this field, we, we give a warning that we can you know, give you anything higher than the mid level one because the other ones are based on, on what type of object it is. Um, yeah, for value, if it's an if it if it's completely empty, then we'll you will we will see it as a negative. But also when it's like an empty string or only tabs or spaces in there, or if you have nil in there as as the word, then we also don't see it as possible positive and the maximum level at the moment is two because you know we're still working on the specification for three um and oh yeah that shouldn't be there. Um, and then, you know we have a couple of million specimens so this girl is still in, in test environment and we can actually show the specimen hopefully 
Um, if I know which step, oh yeah, I made this little dashboard. Um, should be here. Just with to show some things that you can then do with this miscalculation. So I don't know if I can make this bigger. Maybe I can by doing this. Yeah. Um, so here I think we have like one and a half million specimen in the system currently, and we see that the average mid level, which probably doesn't say that much, is zero point eight seven two. If you look at the at the graph uh, with the percentages, oh, um, can I get into this? Okay. Here we have about uh, 145, which is mid level zero, and then um, a million, which is mid level one, and that's like zero point zero two percent, which I think for specimen which have mid level two. Um, which is very well happy with because at least it shows it's reachable with level two. Um, but you can also, oh yeah, this is the same like a, account instead of percentages, but you can also do things like uh, mid level per topic discipline. So, yeah, we see that zoology specimen or maybe an, and botany specimen maybe reach a higher mid level than um, at least unclassified specimen or paleontology or geology specimen, which you know, uh, seems to have a more difficult difficulties in reaching with level one. I mean, it isn't really a good representative in the amount of data sets because there are probably only six, seven, or eight data sets. But you know, this is the general philosophy that you can create these dashboards. Uh, you could also do a mid breakdown per data set. So these are handles of the, of data sets, and then see like some score really good, some just score lower. Um, Oh, yeah, that is the mid breakdown per collection uh, country. So the, the country, so where the specimen was collected. Um, yeah, we have relatively a lot of specimen from the Netherlands, apparently, probably because I did some naturalis data sets in ingestion. But then so you could do these kinds of breakdowns. Um, you could do a really crazy breakdown as well. If you uh, did a breakdown with the identified by uh, where you see that specimen from. Uh, even willing to score mid level one, um, but specimen by uh, T. Tonsberg uh, shown mid level zero. I don't know if, if anyone wants this information, but you know, it's there. Um, and you can make some graphs saying, like, um, how many uh, specimens are missing the uh, information field mo uh, last modified or modified, I think it's called. Uh, you see, we have about a thousand specimens that are missing that, that particular field, and, and license is missing in in that particular field. Uh, I wanted to show preparations because often the preparations, which I think is uh, object type within the mid mid information elements, that's missing most often. That's probably why why mid level two is most often not reached. Um, but yeah, uh, and there was an issue with it in the indexing. So uh, actually, you need to fix that part. Um, for the for the code, I think is it open as well somewhere? Yeah, for the code, um, it it's really a really simple class where we say, well, is is valid the um, dar, the 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 core a, a license field? Um, do we have a valid? And valid is in this case, is there anything in there? Um, so as long as it's not not empty, not null, so there's nothing in there, or if it's just an empty string, or if it's the the word null or capital null, um, we see those as invalid values. If there's any other value, we we see it as a valid value, and and this will be this will be true, and, and so it moves to. Now, if it doesn't comply to any of these, it will get to level zero. For this level two, we make then the distinction between. Is it a bio, uh, biological sample? Or is it a paleontology or geological sample? So, yeah, I've put, put the link in the, in the slide as well. I can, can share the slides so that you can actually have a look at it if you want, if you want to get some inspiration or you want to, you know, copy a couple of things. Um, and I put also a link in there for the open the schema and the harmonization because, you know, the miscalculation is much easier because we already harmonized all the, all the data. Um, I think that's really short what we what we did. That's fantastic, Sam. Thank you so much. Um, 
what I think I'd, what I'd like like to do is I would like to kind of just go straight on um, mm -hmm. so that we can get because yep. um, I also want to bring in uh, Matthias. So hi, Mo, I'm going to ask you to hang on a bit, and we'll come in with Matthias next to just give a quick demo of the of the mids calculator. Um, if that's okay, and then we'll go on to on to Hymo. Yeah, so uh, this is the MITS calculator tool that um, I have presented before. It's an, uh, an R Shiny app that is designed to take um, zipped Darwin Core archives from GBIF and it just, when run locally, um, gives out for each specimen the mid score and then there's some graphs that you can use and you can also export the scores so it's a it's designed to be a sort of simple tool to um calculate some mids levels for different data sets see what the results are and why and um this tool has been around for a bit i don't think it has been used a lot as far as i can tell um I have to shout out to Josh, who's also here. He made a Docker container for it. Um, I have tried, but I've been unable to test it because for some reason, everything I do with Docker is cursed. So that, that always fails, unfortunately. But I presume it's it's a fine job. It's just something on my side. But there are some conclusions um, that I could take, for instance, from applying this to our own herbarium data set from GBIF. Um, which I have listed in the document I shared earlier. I'll share that in the chat again, um, if in case you missed it later on. But as you can see on this um, on my on my shared screen, um, we are mainly mids level one and a bit mids level two. Nothing reaches mids level three, which is because we don't have any uh, piston identifiers for the identifications to our specimens. And we don't have enough um, sort of the same metadata for our georeferenced specimens, which includes things like data and precision in the current specification of MITS. So these glaring ones cause us to miss MITS 3. MITS 2 is mainly missed because of quantitative location. Um, this is because, well, we don't have everything georeferenced in our collection. That's basically the, the main reason for it. But so this tool can be used um, if you just if you have a data set on GBIF, you can download G, the GBIF annotated archive for it, load it into the tool, and it should work. It's a Shiny app. You can run it as the Shiny app, but there's also an installer for it, um, which is now out of date. But I hope to get that up to date again, and then you don't need to do it through any R interface to make it work. Um, one downside is that this tool was designed before we had the triple SOM mapping. So it is based on a JSON schema, which I have for this exercise adapted based on the triple SOM mapping, but that's also an additional hurdle. So ideally it would work with the mapping itself, but yeah, that requires some changes to the code. <laughs> Again, um, yeah, that are the, the main things. So I am one, this tool has been around four, a bit so i'm wondering if anybody has actually looked at it before or tried it or tried it to work yeah um i'm well i can say i've tried it and i really liked it <laughs> i was able to try it and use it <laughs> which um given that i'm not a an informatician i think it <laughs> shows that it was, it's a good job you've done there and did you use the installer for that yeah, it's quite a good question. Um, well, well, either yeah. way, if if you want to yes, just I, I update it, it yes. um, I updated the repo the repository with an updated schema. So, if you want to work with the updated schema, you just have to paste that new version in this in the right spot in this in the, in the, the directory that it's using, and then it should also work. You can also add another custom schema to the app, so that also works. But that's one way of doing mids calculations right now it's and nice to see these examples so that people can then look at them and think can they can they either use ones that are exist or can they use that to to develop something for themselves 
And I think, um, so what I would like to do is to go straight into, I'm just where, apologies for time, but I'm going to go straight into Haimo now. Um, Haimo, are you okay to give a, a quick overview of what you've been doing there? Yeah, it will be uh, quite rough and quick. Um, we have a twofold uh, topic. One is as a precursor for participation of Austria in DISCO, we should have have a uh, local or a national portal for um, the records of objects for, for uh, biological and geological or earth science data. What we did is we were asking GB for the possibility of hosted portals. Austria is not allowed because we're not a member of uh, GBIF. So <clears throat> what we did is, and Chris is also here, so I'm not a developer, it's Chris was doing it. We are calling the GBIF API. We are calling the GeoCase API. And what we did is for institutions which are neither participating data-wise in GBIF or GeoCase, we created a, a shortcut or a temporary solution which is these three uh, radio buttons here. So if you search for a certain genus, this, in this case, uh, a mollusk genus, you get results on all the three of those. And uh, Chris can uh, explain a little bit better, of course, the, all the technical stuff behind it. And this, we agreed, should be uh, based on MITS level two. So the discussion was, was, was I was uh, seeing five minutes ago, about like MITS being a standard or MITS being a concept or MITS being calculated. So when, when I see the tool now from, from Matthias, this would be maybe a better way to go forward. And this is just what I wanted to show you that this Oscar portal is in its preliminary phase. So searching for it is direct calling the APIs of uh, GBIF and uh, GeoCase for the searching the intermediate uh, data from Oscar is a Google uh, shape, uh, a Google uh, spreadsheet. Uh, Chris has some details, that, so there can be uh, millions of uh, data fields in this Google Sheet. So uh, this could be really a solution for intermediate uh, data provision. The second thing is, and that's very important to me currently, there is developments going on at the Natural History Museum to build a relational database on all the objects of all departments. So biological, earth sciences, anthropological, uh, uh, library and archives and everything. And what they do is uh, they also have an objects uh, subdomain created where we use the stable identifier. So the institution, department, and then the object identifier. And they are exposing the data according to three different uh, standards. We call it this way. So MITS for the biological stuff, uh, EDM for the all the uh, social sciences and humanities stuff. And the second, uh, the third one is then the archival uh, ESA DG uh, standard. And my question for myself is: It a bit, a little bit premature to have it, to have it really exposed in this productive uh, environment and showing it, or having like the MITS calculator and giving the the MITS uh, terms as as Matthias and Sam just put out. And what I, why I'm putting this forward is I wanted to have sort of <clears throat> your opinions on how, how this goes uh, in in a direction supportive of MITS, supportive of the MITS tele, um, uh, discussions, or if it's premature, so we could keep, uh, keep it internally and then expose only the ratified standards and stuff. So this is, this is sort of uh, what I was, yeah, I don't know, puzzled a little bit currently speaking frankly so i think <clears throat> i think for me it's, it's been interesting because i because i saw this um the other day but based on the discussion that we've had today mm. i think i mean i really i really like some of the thinking that's going on here um but i wonder if what we're seeing here with that with the mids um on your portal whether we're seeing <clears throat> that that actually what we should be seeing there is maybe a, a Darwin core rather than the mids if we're looking at the data model that actually we should be seeing maybe the Darwin core there and then some indication of the mids level of the record what do we think would that would that because I'm 
Yeah, in Austria, we are shifting from ABCD now to Darwin Core also. And also, that would be, this is exactly oh, what okay. I was thinking. No Darwin Core <laughs> or ABCD or any of those and not MITS as a standard. Yeah. No, it's like really, and and what I would also like is to have some, uh, I don't know, some official recommendation of something. Like also coming maybe from the disco side or from from uh, Disco Flanders at like how they do it and yeah. Or let him a core discussion that Pat brought up uh, earlier that people got confused a little bit and we do not want to confuse people. This is clear, no? But like covering since since uh, Nikki was also here, uh, like covering all these domains is challenging from a perspective of like a general director needs to expose everything she or he has to expose and uh, yeah, being standard compliant is of course important. So Darwin Core would be for me would be also good. Yeah, I mean, it, well, you could even, I mean, I don't know how, how easy that would be, but whether you could even al almost have both options available to people if they wanted them. So you could have a, a Darwin Core or, or an ABCD. I don't know how that, how nightmarishly difficult that would be for you. But, um, but I think that would be the, the, the thing. So that, that instead of equivalent to maybe the EDM standard, you, was it ED, EMD standard? Yeah. EMD. Yeah. Yeah. Data model, um, European model stuff. Yeah. Yes. So it'd be more more the either Darwin Core or ABCD. And then within that there would be some indication of the of the mids level. That might be like a way forwards so for could that. Could this be could the tool that just Matthias just presented, could this mid level mids level calculator work on the uh, API um, requested um, hits? directly or do you have to ingest the data into your system? This is one of the questions because currently we are for the OSCAR portal, we are only working uh, through API calls. We don't store any data. So this tool is based on uh, GBIF annotated Darwin Core archives, which are typically generated asynchronously. So doing that with the API is already an extra hurdle. So typically it would be you request this file, it is loaded into the system. Currently typically locally, but this could in principle be set up as a service. Although MITS calculation at this level is relatively intensive. So as a service that raises some uh, complications. Um, and yeah, I, I I wouldn't do it through external APIs. I would always do the calculation internal based on a data set that's loaded internally. I wouldn't set that up because yeah, Ideally, you'd want to do, to do this, that it scales for data sets of millions of records. And then, yeah, external websites really won't like that. Yeah, so I guess, that's the yeah. case already in Austria also. No? It's like our, our corpus is currently about 10 million from the biological sciences. So I guess the alternative there is to, to see if GBIF might be up for doing the MIDS calculation internally within GBIF and making that available. Yeah, that was always also the idea that GBIF would at some point implement this, either it could be at the IPT or biogas level, or it could be internally GBIF, mm -hmm. it could be both and you could compare it. But oh, yeah. yeah, for that, mm -hmm. there's first needs to be a, a release of MITS that they can use and yes. that they can also reliably use. So it's more than just a document, a report with an outline of the MITS levels, it should be something machine readable, which is why we've done this triple SLM mapping work. Yeah. Sorry, Chris, yes. Well, just to, just to clarify a bit from the technical side, what, what Haimo said. So um, the portal actually has two important components when we display data. So one's the result list and the other one is the result details. And in the result list, the stuff that you saw uh, on Hymo's screen, we use MIDS because MIDS allows us to group results very efficiently. It's a minimum uh, information description of each result. Therefore, we can ex we can expose a lot of results at at one one time. But then the user has the possibility to click on a specific result and get the original output, the complete output. So when you search. When you get GBIF results, you'd get the full GBIF object, occurrence object. And when you get geocase, you get the full geocase, so on and so forth. And hence, 
the question, should we encourage this or the, the data provider to produce a calculation? Can we do a calculation on the fly on user request? Or could we assume a calculation based on the based on the source of the data? So could we assume that GBIF is compliant with mids level two, therefore that's always gonna be mids level two or three in the future? Pick that up a bit, Elspeth. So, sorry? Can, I, I can probably... Yes, yes, that can I, yeah. yes, that would be great. So, um, let's see. Well, so, so you suggested three options. I think GPF will also always accept all, all data. Because, um, yeah, they, they won't enforce any any data completeness standard. So they won't enforce and say only we will do only mid level one or two. So, so the third one, I think, you, yeah, you cannot assume that it is a certain mid level when it comes from, from GBIP. Um, then the other one to calculate on the fly, it's, it's probably possible. Um, it might be a performance hit, but you have the Darwin core fields there. So, yeah, based on 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 the tripwise then mapping, you can calculate mids on the fly. It it should be possible, but it might be might hit your performance. But that that's a bit on depending on how, on how you do it because because you need a calculation for each each specimen. Um, the other option um, that would be to include it uh, to see if we can get it included in the, in the, in the EBIF model basically the, the, yeah in the ex data exchange models that we use within within our community i think that that would actually be really good if we could see if we can get an a filtering um probably in in darwin core or somewhere else where we can actually put the mid level so that if it has been calculated by disco or gbif or maybe by 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 a local system that it can actually be provided to the to the next step to either a data aggregator or a data consumer so that part of the package um yeah so i think that would be really nice if we can get in, in yeah some kind of dedicated mid level field where we can exchange this this information and, and give it to the to the next consumer party thank you sam so, um, Chris, does that does that help you? And and Heimo, does, does that help you both? On the short term, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll manage. On the long term, I think Sam's proposal to me personally, as a technical person, I think it sounds the most reasonable because um, if the ingestion processes allow all data then we can expand the data during the injection ingestion process to also describe the mids level so th this would be calculated on on data let's say on on writing mode yeah on data ingestion which means you do it once you don't have to calculate it every time you explore the data that's the most frequent action with the data looking at it exploring it having a calculation during that time is very expensive in terms of maintenance and in terms of technical capacity. So I fully support Sam's idea to include a mids level on ingestion uh, uh, in the ingestion process. Thank you. So um, I'm looking at the time and um, I know this, uh, David will be watching the time as well because um, we, have to close up so that the next meeting can take place <laughs> so we cannot overrun um so i just want to thank everyone very much and ben thank you as well for for helping to host this really appreciate that um so as i've said um we're going to finish up there um we'll follow up on the ratification with tadvig after this um and we'll keep everyone posted on that uh, we'll also be restarting the the mids meeting so um we'll inform people about about those coming up so do make sure you join the mailing list and um, so you hear about those if you want to if you want to join them um, and I think that's that's us I think we need to stop there um, so thank you everyone for 